At its Surface event, Microsoft announced a variety of updates to its existing Surface products and two new and kind of exciting ones. I'm here with uh, ZDNet Editor-in-Chief Larry Dignan to talk about Microsoft's Surface announcements and where it's leading the company in the future. So Larry, let's get right to it. Um, what did you think of the updates to the existing Surface products? Uh, I thought the updates were pretty solid. I mean, I think the biggest thing for IT shops is just that they're making them more serviceable, which means you'll be able to take them apart, upgrade memory, things like that. Uh, that sounds like a pretty basic thing, but it'll be really big for corporations. Uh, but the thing that really got me was sort of at the end where Microsoft kind of went full Osborne effect and outlined a couple products that'll be coming out in holiday 2020. So we're looking at, you know, they were basically showing off stuff that's more than a year away. Right. So you're talking about the Surface uh, Duo and the Surface Neo these dual screen foldable devices that seem to be a cross between a phone and a PC. Yeah, I mean, the, the Surface Neo was the one that is dual screen and it has this cool magnetic keyboard that kind of folds over it. Um, that one looked pretty useful uh, and that one's closest to, you know, that sort of surface vibe they have where, you know, you're basically combining tablets and laptops and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that would run on something called Windows X, which is sort of that next generation Windows. Um, what's really got me though was the one where they announced the Duo, which is a small screen version of the Neo, except it runs on Android. So that device is a phone. And yet what was interesting was, you know, the, the Microsoft executives were basically saying, yeah, you know, some of the leaks were right about the Android phone and we know you're gonna write about this as if it's a phone, but we want you to think beyond that a little bit. And when they showed it in practice, it was very, it was kind of hard to tell what it was, right? It was a little bit of a tablet, a little bit of a phone, um, it's a little bigger, uh, but what I liked about it from a dual screen perspective is that it had a hinge, right? So it wasn't like the Galaxy Fold where it's sort of this thing, you gotta hope the screen bends the right way and all that. This seemed a much more solid option for me. And it also has a 360 degree hinge. So it allows you to tint the device if you want to view videos in um, landscape mode, so it doesn't always have to be in portrait mode. It, and like you said, it also seems much more rugged and less prone to hardware failure like we saw with the uh, uh, announcements on the Samsung Fold and then the re-released version that just came out. Yeah, and, and the other thing for the, that resonated with me was that it, you know, it runs on Android and has all the play apps and all that. Um, cause what I do know is a lot of folks in the mic, you know, who are in that Microsoft universe, they're running on Android. Like Android has turned out to be the best Microsoft phone they can have. So it, it's kind of interesting that they put this out a year ahead of time cause they want developers to work on them and, you know, come up with new use cases and all that. But I kind of like the idea of Microsoft and Google collaborating on a device because it provides that bridge that makes a lot of sense. Now, you know, a lot of this will come down to specs, like, you know, at the end of the day, you're still going to want a good camera and all that. Um, but this, this feels like it's a new category, right? It, it's definitely in that foldable counting category. Like I wouldn't call the Galaxy Fold a um, smartphone, really. It, it sort of is one, but yet not. Uh, this one seems, to, the Surface Duo seems to push that even farther. And that so, was... You know, that's something that, you know, you and I have talked about before as business professionals, you know, we're really looking for that sweet spot between a tablet, a PC, laptop, and a phone, a device that is usable maybe in all those situations. And we, we've sort of gotten there halfway with DeX on Samsung devices and with the iPad and on Apple devices. This, like you said, does feel to me as someone who's been around hardware for 20 years is something that is different. Yeah, and, and the, other, the other thing that was interesting about what Microsoft was talking about is they talked about flow a lot, right? So when you think about it, 
we've got something, you know, we, we all have multiple devices. We're changing, you know, we're uploading data or text to someplace. So it, we're basically always uploading something or you, we always have some distraction to get us away from what we're trying to accomplish. So this idea of a dual screen device that can sort of, you know, keep you in that flow and keep you working uh, is quite appealing to me. I don't know if the software will live up to the, those, that ethos really, but I think that idea of flow is something that, you know, software and hardware makers are gonna to need to address because frankly, we just got too many screens and too many distractions and, and too much of just everything. So, so software, I think that message makes sense. Yeah, and speaking of software, I think that's really important. Did you see anything at the event that made people who weren't already in a Microsoft ecosystem, if you're not already using Office, if you're not already using OneNote, uh, if you're not already using PowerPoint, if you've already made a switch or your enterprise has made a switch, to uh, Google Apps, uh, to Android devices, to Apple devices. Was there anything here that you think might bring people back? Or is it really still for people who are already in the Microsoft ecosystem? I, I, honestly, I honestly think, I don't think anybody's in one camp or the other, right? So I use, I use G Suite a ton. I still use Office a ton, right? So... I don't, I don't really think it's an either or world. Like you might, you might use G Suite in your personal life and you might use Office at work or increasingly you wind up using Office in your personal life and G Suite at work. Either way, I don't think, I think these things coexist based on wh what works for bet, what works better, right? So just say if you're doing a corporate presentation, you're probably using PowerPoint. You can't get out of it, right? Um, you know, Word and sharing Google Docs and, and collaborating, that's a different ball game, right? You might use both. Um, so you look at these things, they're almost, you know, they're sweets, but you're still picking and choosing what makes more sense to you. And I think that's what, that's what makes that Microsoft Duo device interesting because I just know in my world, I, I use both. Um, and I'm kind of, you know, equal opportunity about it. So... I, I think that device is is interesting because it does have a nice hardware design, which you know it happens to be Microsoft. But the fact you can combine Android and Windows apps, which are just fine on that Android device, I think that kind of speaks to a lot of people. So, you know, I, I mean, the best Microsoft device right now in terms of smartphones is probably the Pixel Four, right? Because you get the latest Android or, or Pixel Three. I mean, Four is coming, but you know, the Pixel device is a damn good Microsoft phone. <laughs> you kind of get the best of both. And I think that's what they're going for with that Duo. And it's, it's pretty interesting. Now, yeah. the problem here is that they're basically tipping off people to what's happening in late 2020. So that's a long wait. Um, and it gives a lot of people a lot of time to figure out how to do it faster. And I think that's the biggest risk here is just kind of like, what's that world look like a year from now? But, you know, as far as buying a smartphone, I've, I saw enough today where I'm kind of like, eh, I'm going to wait. Right. Yeah, you might hold off and enterprises might hold off until the end of next year to really kind of see what comes out. You know, talking about the future, one of the terms that I heard several times uh, was intelligent edge or this idea of pushing powerful computing uh, onto these edge devices. Um, also, of course, there was uh, at least more than one reference to cloud services, to Azure. How does that play into uh, the Surface plans Microsoft has for next year? I, I think the plans, the plans for next year and, and you know, even the devices they launched today, um, when you look at the Surface, it's sort of stunning that they're not necessarily enterprise tools yet, right? So, you know, you look at the Surface laptop, um, you don't really see them in corporations much. And that's because of the serviceability and things like that. So, so I think this is probably start of, you know, a more enterprise push for those devices, um, which is kind of funny since it's coming from Microsoft. But I understand why they kind of did the surface the way they did it, though, because you still have these channel conflicts, right? So, you know, Dell, Lenovo, and HP are still your biggest partners. So... 
you know, if, if it depends on who's going to actually service these surfaces in the enterprise. And I think that's, you know, when they're talking about flow, they're really speaking to knowledge workers. When they're talking about juggling these different apps, they're really talking to corporations. Um, so I think there was, you know, a, a business pivot here um, or a more, I guess, more of a turn into business and enterprise that I think we'll have to watch over the next year. Yeah, definitely. And for all the Microsoft news and Surface coverage uh, for the next year, be sure to check out Tech Republic and ZDNet.